Teams below 500, lost three or four defensive issues of late, and Houston's in town. That's a problem. Fourth inning, two on for Jeff Kent. That's trouble. RBI double. In fact, two RBIs. Astros up 2 nothing. Greg Biggio, he's been around a long, long time. Leads all active major leaguers with 246 career hit by pitches. 21 shy of the modern day record by Don Baylor. And top five, wouldn't you know it? There's number 247. Of course, he's got all that padding on what it doesn't actually hurt. Goes to first base. Mike Hesman, on the other hand, unblemished. Zero career hit by pitches in two seasons until then. Tim Redding hits Hesman. Congrats. Save the bruise. Umpire warns both dugouts. Jimmy Williams miffed about the warning. We move on to the sixth. Astros up 3-1. Jeff Kent layered down and smack him. Yak him. Fourth homer in six games. Strohs have won four straight and eight of their last nine. Fathers opening a three-game set at Florida. Jake Peavy had not given up a home run in 35 innings this season. Bottom two, Michael Ole. Yeah, not so much. His eighth of the year, first allowed by Peavy all season, and it's 1-0 Florida. Bottom four, it's that Mike Lowell guy again. And there's home run number two on the season, allowed by Peavy. Lowell's ninth, he was two for three. Peavy allowed two runs on seven hits in six and two-thirds, with Ramon Hernandez set up outside, and Peavy went inside. That's a problem. Top six, here's another problem. Listen up. Oh, Carl Pavano hits Brian Giles in the helmet. Giles would be okay. Next batter, Pavano facing Phil Nevin. Nevin doesn't like the call. Doug Eddings doesn't like Nevin's attitude. Pavano strikes out the side. He allows just one run on four hits and eight. And he's dating Alyssa Milano. Bottom seven, Peavy beams Pavano on the first pitch. Some retribution. Pavano said afterward, he can hit me in the head next time as long as we win the ball game. They did, 3-1. Five road trip opening a three game visit from the Royals. Boston eight and three at home this season. Bottom eight, they're down six two though. Gabe Kapler into left. Matt stares, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Yeah. Wind swirling at Fenway Park. Evidence there. Next up, Doug Mirabelli catching for Tim Wakefield, who started the game into the corner and left. And there's Matt stares again. The throw, about as good as his previous play, gets away. Two runs come in, and the Boston Red Sox are down two now. It's 6-4. Bottom nine, Johnny Damon leading off. He had homered earlier. Ball four, that's a walk. Mike McDougal, not so much. Doesn't like the call from Joe West. He may have had a point. Next up, Mike Bellhorn. Say hello to Lilfer. His third two-run shot, and we are tied at six. Jason Veritek pinch hitting with Manny Ramirez on first. And we saw the Royals with some fielding issues earlier. Here are more. Juan Gonzalez, not exactly a gazelle out there. Manny coming all the way around from first. Will we have a Wendell Kim moment? Safe. No slide needed. Ramirez said, I was running hard all the way. I feel better than when I hit a homer. Red Sox win 7-6 after trailing 6-2 in the eighth, their third walk-off win at Fenway this year. So the Yankees looking to start a new streak in Seattle where Edgar Martinez does his business. You see the nice career numbers against the Yanks, but then again, against whom doesn't he have nice career numbers? Bottom one, no score. Pay attention. Two runners on for Edgar. Sends one down the right field line for a double scoring Randy Wynn and Scott Spezio. 2-0 Mariners. Martinez becomes the 39th player since 1900 to record his 500th career double. Here's the tricky part. Top third. Yankees down 3-0. Runner on first for Ruben Sierra against Ryan Franklin. Fly ball to right center. Ichiro and Wynn converge and collide. Ball falls in the process. Hideki Matsu Suey goes to second. But wait a minute. Second base umpire Alfonso Marquez points to Sierra and calls him out. Understandably, Sierra would like an explanation. Well, here it is. Ichiro made the catch, dropped the ball after colliding with Wynn. But Sierra ran past Matsui in the process while he was returning to first base. Sierra is automatically out. All Joe Torre got out of the deal was ultimately an explanation. Bottom third, Martinez against John Lieber. And you're so not catching that. Two-run poke scores Raul Abanez ahead of him, second of the season. Martinez two for four, four RBIs. What's wrong with the Yanks? They've lost two straight. Twins and A's in an epic battle. That's Lou Ford hitting 386 with three home runs coming in. Top eight, Twins down 7-5. Ford against Chris Hammond with a couple on. RBI knocked to left, cuts the lead to 7-6. Next batter is Jose Offerman. Right through the box. 
run scores. Mark Kotze is going to try to nail Ford at third. Hits Ford in the backside. He will trot home to score. Twins now up 8-7. to seven. Henry Blanco would later double to extend the lead to 9-7. Bottom eighth, A's down a run. Bases jammed for Rubio Durazo who will walk in the run. So we are all tied up at 9. That takes us to the bottom of the 13th, Marco Scudero at the plate. Ground ball. Damian Miller, though, takes out Nick Puccio to prevent the double play. So the A's have an extra out. And that extra out comes to the plate in the person of Eric Burns. Grab your keys. It's time to go. That'll do it. 11-9, Burns' first ever walk-off shot. A's first extra inning win. Top second, two out, Dodgers up 1-0. Oliver Perez pitching against Jose Hernandez, who is pounding. Solo shot, second of the season. LA up 2-0. And that was plenty for Wilson Alvarez, making his first start of the season for the Dodgers. Bottom second, Alvarez against Craig Wilson. Hair flying, bat swinging, not making contact. Bottom four, Jack Wilson just stood there and took it. Bottom five. Greg Wilson, hello again and goodbye again. Bottom five, two outs now. Alvarez against Rob McCoviak. Gets him to ground out to Sean Green. That'll end the fifth, and we've got no hits through five. A little something brewing in Pittsburgh. Bottom six, Chris Steins. Ground ball, second base. Hernandez is on the case, but can't make the play. And they'll rule that a single. So Alvarez allows one hit in seven innings. Face just one more than the minimum. Guillermo Mota threw two more no-hit innings, and then Jose Hernandez plays insurance man with the two-run shot. First time the Pirates were one hit at home since April of 91. Giants swept in three games at Shea Stadium, hoping for better luck in Cincinnati. Barry Bonds, only one home run in his last 12 games. Top two facing Corey Lytle. First pitch right into the Bonds infield shift. He would also ground out on the first pitch of his second at bat of the game. Top five, man on second, A.J. Pruszynski. Loops one to short center. Ken Griffey Jr. going to bare hand this one comes up throwing. Javier Valentin catches it on the fly, and Pedro Feliz is meat. Bottom five now. Man on second for Ryan Friel facing Kirk Reeder. Reeder struggling this year. Brandon Larson going to try and score. Bonds fires home. A great throw here from Bonds on the hop. And it stays scoreless. Top seven, Lytle intentionally walks Bonds with the bases empty. And the numbers say that this is the right move because the Giants are batting only 130 after Bonds has intentionally walked this season. So can Pedro Feliz boost that 130 average? They're looking for some offense after Barry gets a free pass, and the answer is yes, he can. His fourth home run of the year, the Giants have a 2-0 lead, so the free pass to Barry backfires. Bottom eight, Reds down 6-0. Griffey to left, and look at Barry Bonds, go get this one. Griffey 0 for 4. Reader allowed only three hits in eight innings. Giants win 6-1. Phillies into the Bob to meet the unit who has owned them historically. And Larry Boa's team, well, it was a bad time for him. They're hitting 212 over the last seven games. He said, I don't know what the answer is. If I did, I would be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So, which of Phillies heavy hitters has the answer? Is it Pat Burrell? Is it Jim Tomei? Is it Bobby Abreu? You can take your pick as Randy Johnson pitches to him. Abreu at the plate. Smoke him if you got him. Burrell down on strikes. Then Tomei. He's got nothing as well. You it strikes out 10. It looks like Randy's going to be the winner here. Steve Finley against Vicente Padilla. High deep gone. All those things. Eighth homer in nine games for Finley. His last seven have all been solo shots, or it's only one nothing Diamondbacks. Top seven, Jim Tomey. Last week, we made mention of the fact that Tomey was out of the lineup against Johnson. It should be noted he played, and he took him out. First career home run against the unit. So, looks like it's out of the three stars. Tomey's your winner, right? Wrong. Jimmy Rollins against Mike Coplo. Rollins hitting a buck 85, but singles to right, scoring Mike Lieberthal. 2-1 Phillies. They win it 4-1. First win for Padilla on the Three, they're loaded for Midre Cummings facing John Lackey. Lackey gets out of it. He retired 16 straight at one point. Pitched a superb ball game. Bottom three, David Eckstein to left. Shane Halter comes in, and it's 1-0 Anaheim. Bottom four, Jose Molina. I'm going to go ahead and make this a top play nominee. To center, Rocco Baldelli charging, throwing home to get Rob Quinlan. It's still 1-0 Anaheim. Rocco Baldelli, the pride of Rhode Island.
Bottom eight, Vladimir Guerrero and more Rocco Baldelli. Rocco robbing Vlad the Impaler. He's all hopped up on that Dell's frozen lemonade. Tried to Rhode Island. Bottom uh, top nine, Devil Rays down to their last out. Carl Crawford's the tying run at second. Tino Martinez to Quinlan, who bobbles it. And Lackey survives a three-hit shutout. Angels 20 and 10, the best record in baseball. The Tigers lugging a four-game losing streak into Texas. Michael Young having a great season leading off against Jeremy Bonderman. He's got a little something for his people. Six of the season. He's hitting 373, 1 0 Texas. A few batters later, runners on first and second for Brad Fulmer, who delivers. RBI double to left. Run scores, Rangers up two zip. After a walk, bases are now loaded for David DeLucci. Hits it to right. Bobby Higginson's out there. But bobbles the ball, can't find it for a moment. A couple runs score in the interim. DeLucci two for three, and it's a 4-0 Ranger lead. Watch it one more time. Higginson out there, routine base hit, ground ball, but sort of off the heel of the glove, up in the air, all over the place. Trouble for Bobby Higginson, but he would atone against Joaquin Benoit. Down a run in the fourth. Higginson, redemption, two-run poke. Second extra base hit in 58 at bats for him. It's been rough all around. 5 4 Tigers tied at five. Hi, Pudge. Welcome back. Two run shot, fifth of the season, first against the Rangers. Texas winless at their new renamed field. Myers' move to the 60 day disabled list is seen as encouraging news by the Cubs, who expect him back June 3rd. Now, Pryor's move is retroactive to the start of the season when he suffered Achilles and elbow problems. He still hasn't pitched in a game this year, but they hope by the time Pryor's ready to throw 90 or 100 pitches and gets a couple of minor league starts in, it will coincide with the end of his DL stint, and that's June 3rd. The Cubs are off that day, but they begin a three-game homestand against the Pirates on Friday, June 4th. Former Cubs, Sean Estes, facing his former team in Wrigley Field, already in a jam in the second. They're loaded for Corey Patterson. The deep left center, Jeremy Burnett is on the run and into the Ivy. No, he doesn't have it. Three run score on the double. Burnett said afterward, I caught it. I just hit the wall and knocked it loose. Four nothing Cubs. Jeremy a little slow to get up, and in fact, he did catch it. And yep, he's right, knocks it loose. Cubs up seven nothing in the third, and oh, it's Sammy time. Uh, it stays in the yard. Two run single O's. Estes is pummeled for nine runs on seven hits in two and two third. Nine nothing Chicago. Carlos Zambrano making it stick. Rockies manager Clint Hurdle said this kid is electric. He struck out five. Did not walk a batter. Hasn't given up a run in his last two starts. Shuts it down here. Zambrano a two hit shutout. He retired his first 14. Faced only two batters over the minimum. Cubs win 11 nothing. Hurdle said he threw us a beating basically. Cards up north in Montreal for Matt Morris's 150th career start. It wasn't that memorable. Bottom first, Brad Wilkerson takes advantage of the hanging breaking ball. Expos up 2 0. Bottom five, Spos up 4 1. Two outs, Morris against Andy Chavez. 0 2 pitch. Didn't get it. Chavez would single on the next pitch. So Morris a little irked later in the inning. Steps on the mound, wets his fingers, not allowed by Major League rules. Larry Poncino calls ball one to Jose Vidro because Morris touched his mouth on the mound. Poncino has a little discussions about that. So Matty Moe's angst is mounting. He was done after six innings. Cards down 4-1 in the ninth. Pinch hitter Colin Porter launching one. It's high, and it's high five. Hits the speaker out there in right field. First career home run. Cuts the lead to 4-2. Next batter, Marlon Anderson tries to bunt his way on, but Tony Batista will have none of it. Expos win just their second series opener. They've taken 4-5 overall. Mets, winners of four in a row, opening a three-game visit from the Brew Crew. Tom Glavitt and company facing the National League's number one run-producing first baseman. It's not Tommy, not Helton, not Bagwell. It's Lyle Overbay. Mm. Yeah, 25 RBAs coming into the game. RBIs. Curious. Top three, yeah, sure. Well, he adds another one here. Straight A's on his fourth home run. And Overbay's 26th RBI, 4 nothing Milwaukee. That's Scott Podsednik. He's stolen 16 straight bases dating back to last year. And there he goes. Here's number 17. That ties Robin Younts. Franchise record. There's nothing better than Brewer stolen base trivia. No. Next up, Craig Council hitting 211. Sacrifice. Ty Wigginton's throw hits Council. Podsednik scores from second. Look at the slide here. Oh, that's gorgeous. 5-2 Milwaukee. Mets flashing the leather. 
Podsednik and Kareem Garcia attacking this one like an innocent Fenway Park groundskeeper. <laughs> oh, stuck the landing. Then in the ninth, Piazza. Uh oh. Bobble and catch calls everybody off and finally gets it against get Keith Ginter. Two batters later, it's our man Overbay again. Down the right field line, fair ball. Jeff Jenkins scores Overbay three for four. Brewers win seven to five. Just Milwaukee's second win in seven games. How about the Indians and the Orioles? Cliff Lee starting in the mound for the Tribe. He's three and zero oh this year with a three one four ERA. Let's let's go ahead and meet. Sure. Cliff Lee. Maybe we could have some drinks or something later on. Drafted by Baltimore, didn't sign. Cleveland acquired him from. Montreal on the Bartolo Colon deal is yet to give up three runs in a single start this season. That's pretty good. I feel like I know him better already. Bottom third, tied at one. Lee gets some help from his D. Miguel Tejada drive to left. Matt Lawton on the case at the wall. At, brings it back. Tejada, incredulous. One more time. Glove up over fan. Wisely pulled the hands back at the last moment. Top. 5-2-1 try. Bases loaded. Two outs for Omar Vizquel. Trying to steal home, and he failed. Watch it one more time. Played well. Tagged out by Javi Lopez. That ends the inning. This ends the game. Bottom 10th. Tied at 2. Larry Bigby off Chad Derman. That'll do it. Get your stuff. It's time to go. Bigby's fifth.